Okay, today you're looking at a Japanese handmade snare drum. Six and a half by 14 inch maple fiberglass shell in the free floater hardware in piano black lacquer. Let's go. This model was built in Japan and is one of the very first to go into production. The pearl maple fiberglass shells are maple shells that have been laminated with a fiberglass netting to create a seamless shell. I can tell by the rough surface on the inside of this drum that it was handmade and it's a one of a kind. The bearing edge is in excellent shape. Yes, most of my drums in this series so far have been bought from Japan. I figured I'd show you a complete teardown and rebuild. I had already rebuilt this drum and brought it back to life before this video, but I tore it down today just for you. Here we go. Pearl's free floating snare removes all the hardware from the shell. This allows the player to change the shell as easily as the head. The throw off, lugs, and other hardware are part of the special edge ring, which holds the drum and the heads together. It's even got a bearing edge cut into it. Once you get the drum apart, I start by cleaning all the chrome. I use Fuller's Kitchen Wax and Triple Zero Stainless Steel Wool Pads. As I mentioned in earlier videos, I use white lithium grease on all my parts. It's heavy, it's clean, and despite the fact that it's grease, it doesn't loosen once it's tightened. These are the first generation lugs on the free floater. They're machine spun and chrome plated. I added some of the grease, filling those loose gaps in the threads and lightly tightened it with a socket wrench. I take this time to lube up all the inserts with some grease. These maple fiberglass shells have been discontinued. This drum here was built in the Chiba factory in Japan in 1985, and it's a one of a kind. Because of the way this drum is built, I decided to lube up the strainer adjustment first. It has an aluminum rod with super light springs that were pretty rusty when I got them, but everything is now on the mend and moving smoothly. So of course, I've built these drums a few times in my career. However, like a ding dong, I always manage to put the strainer adjustment on before mounting the plates for the throw off equipment. Perhaps I should have held off on the cocktails after starting this project. Anyway, I had to do it twice. Because the shell is free of any hardware, that aluminum rim has to hold all the gear. These two plates are the base for the throw-off adjusters. Okay, so on to the throw-off. This is the updated for 1980s Gladstone throw-off. This design changed on and off over a 20-year period, but it stayed relatively the same. These are great throw-offs. They did have a tendency to break a rivet on the inner part of the latch, so make sure you take care of these and add plenty of grease to keep them running good. Don't make your strainer too tight. That puts too much pressure on all the parts. I like to push the grease into the rivets with a small brush. I just do the whole thing over and over again, and I make a big mess. Just make sure you polish it up when you're done. The second butt plate strainer is a little bit different. It's got a lot more parts, so use your discretion when tearing this one apart. I happened to take the whole thing apart. It took me a while to get it back together, but you can grease this thing up without tearing it apart. With the maintenance complete, I can put this whole thing back together now. Here you can see the mistake I made by adding the snare adjustment before adding the mounting plate to the hoop. This drum originally came with die cast hoops. I don't care for die cast hoops. They get pitted, they're heavy, and I don't like how they sound. I happen to find these two great first generation pearl super hoops online. The first generation super hoops would first appear on their steel drums. The price was right and I couldn't resist. With the operation complete, it's time to pop on the heads. Grab some fullers and shine up all that greasy hardware. Of course, I won't use anything else other than the Remo Snare Hazy Ambassador on the bottom. I'm not going to get into the specifics of how to adjust snare drums. I think it's something everybody should learn on their own. However, these particular snares would overshoot the head by an inch on each side. This meant that the wires themselves were the only thing touching the head. It's a beautiful design and they sound fantastic. Okay, time to put the top head on. This is a Ludwig Silver Dot. I found it at half price because it has a misprint on it. I figured I'd give it a try. The original tension rods on this drum were in rough shape, but instead I just bought some brass ones. These kind of match the badge and I thought it kind of gave it a cool look. Of course, I added the Danmar washers to minimize slipping. I don't know what else to say. That just about does it. Thanks for watching and let's give it a listen.